Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. This is the fourth video in a series on time intelligence subjects that Brian Julius and I are doing and we'll be looking at dynamic start and end dates for Power Query day tables. Now if you watched the second video you already saw how to create a day table with a Power Query function and also one example of how to dynamically change the end date for that table. But now we'll look at some other alternatives. So let's go over the Power Query. So here is our Power Query day table function. And as you can see, it has four parameters. So it has a required start date, a required end date, an optional fiscal year start month, and an optional holiday list. When you invoke this query, a new query, query is created. And in the store step of that query, you can see the query function that was invoked. And you see in the same order as they were declared, the parameters. So this is the start date, the end date, the fiscal year, start month, and also the holiday list. So let's examine some options. We have a fact table sales here and that contains an order date column and the first date in that calendar is the 24th of September 2017. So let's see if we can extract that. So I'm going to create a new blank query and we'll look for list.min. So this returns the minimum item uh, in the list. So you need to give it a list. And of course, a single column is a list. So we're going to reference our sales table and our order date column. And that gives us that first date. So it returned the 24th of September, 2017. So let's rename this query, first sale. But making your calendar start at the 24th of September probably doesn't make sense, right? So we can just turn this back into the start of the year. So again, I'm going to create a new blank query. And we'll look at start of year and it has a function called date.start of year so I'm going to select that and press enter and sure enough this returns the first value of a given year for a date a date time or date time zone value now we have a date value here that's our first sale so let's pause that so first and press enter and this now returns the 1st of January 2017. So let's call this start of year. But there's another way to get exactly the same value and that's using the intrinsic date. So I'm going again going to create a new blank query. And we're just going to use that intrinsic date value. So hashtag date. And I will have to pass a dynamic value for the year. So let's add date.year. Again, reference our first sale. And then, of course, past the month January and the first day. Excellent. So if we step back to our date table query here for a second, we can now change this uh, first start date parameter. 
So it doesn't really matter if we select start of year or FX start date. I'm just going to use the FX start date here and press enter. And we now see that our calendar starts from January 1st, 2017. Perfect. Now we can do exactly the same for the end date, right? So I'm going to right click my parameter and function folder again, select new query, blank query. Now for the end date, we don't need the list min, but of course the list max. So is list.max Right, and again we're going to pass the same uh, query, so we're going to reference sales and the same order date column. Excellent. So the last date from that date table, or sorry, from that effect table sales is the 24th of April 2020. So let's see and sort this descending and yes, that's correct. So let's rename this last sale. And again, we can do exactly the same as we did for the start of year. There probably is also an end of year, right? So let's try that. Right click, a blank query, and and sure enough, there it is, end of year. And we're going to pass our last sale. So let's call this end of year. But the same holds true, right, for uh, the start of year, there, you can also use the date intrinsic to return the 31st of December of any given year. But there is of course uh, a real possibility that when you reach the end of a year that your data will spill over into the new year. There are a couple of ways to deal with that. Let's create a new blank query. And let's just uh, reference the end of year here. And there is a function in Power Query called add years. So we can just select add years. So date dot add years. We'll take a date time value and we'll add an, a number as number of years. Okay, so we can just add one. And sure enough, this now returns the 31st of December 2021. So let's call that end of next year. Okay, so let me bring in my browser for a second, right? Because if you go to docs.microsoft.com and look up the Power Query M formula language, there's a section on Power Query M functions and there you'll have the date functions and date functions overview. And as you can see, there are a lot more functions in Power Query dealing with dates. So if you want to explore more date functions, go to this website and just look through it. Just examine it, you know, start a new uh, blank query and just explore. So that would be my advice to you. If you want to learn more, just dive in. So let's also add that end date to our date table. So we'll at the end of next year. Enter. And if 
we look at our years, sure enough, it now runs to 2021. Let's close and apply. So down below here, you'll find some links if you want to get started on your own. There's a link to the extended day table and of course, a link to a topic related to dynamic start and end dates for your day tables. So I do hope you've enjoyed this short video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA channel if you don't want to miss out on any new content. All the best.